Hi everybody and welcome to part two to Devil's Backbone or Backbone Trail. So today is part two and what that means is balance day. I needed to get my values darker, lighter, my colors richer, more pure, you know, all that balance stuff. And that's what we did today in our 35 minute video. So very important day. I'm, when I started today, I thought, oh man, I hope I can pull this out because I have a new palette that I'm working on, a new limited palette. But even with that, I think it just is starting to really have a zing to it. So let's get started with uh, today's video. And don't forget to subscribe to this station. And I need subscribers and uh, get critiques and um, go to my website and uh, find out all kinds of stuff. But appreciate you coming by really, really a lot. So thanks very much. Enjoy the painting today. Okay, bye-bye. Good morning again, and thank you for coming in for part two. I think I'm going to name this um, Backbone Trail because it's um, the open space behind my studio and house. And um, what I was able to do, and you've done if you've done part one, is to come back and get a fresh look at this. I appreciate what we did yesterday was to cover the whole, I think I've got 11 by 20 here uh, with paint, but it just gives me a good indication of what I need to do today. And I want to do some things that maybe aren't on this reference. And that is, I'm going to darken up the sky more than the reference has. I need to darken the foreground and the background and uh, what I'll do if I have time today is lighten up the uh, the uh, verticals here on the cliffs and work on those warms. So we're going to work on A, B, and C. What um, I've done a little bit this morning and use uh, uh, YouTubers can see from the overhead is I experimented with some mixtures and encourage you to get some mixtures out with this limited palette uh, to, you know, get your greens and, and warms and experiment with some of those colors and make some mixtures that you think that you might be using in the next session. So that's what I did and I encourage you to do that also. So what's next? Well, I want to mix some nice darks because it's just not dark enough down here, particularly these greens. So um, what I'm going to do is um, mix kind of a yellow ochre type color. And um, to do that, what I'm going to do is do a yellow, this bright yellow we have. Some, and be careful with this red I'm using, uh, red. This is cad red medium and some gray. And let's go with some more gray. Get some more yellow in there. What I'm noticing through all this is that just a little bit of some of these strong colors can really make a difference. And that's kind of making a, a warmer somewhat of a yellow ochre type color. You can also add a little bit of Naples to it. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty nice stuff. It's warm. And uh, I'm going to cool it down with a little bit more gray. And this gray is so strong. And I'm darkening it with gray. And see, now that's a little darker. All right, that's going to be good enough to get started. Let me get this stuff off my knife. And get into the neighborhoods here of between the bushes. Oh, 
All right, boy, I sure didn't make enough product, that's for sure. So I'm going to have to thin this out a little bit. And next what we're going to do is work on those darks. And let me get some down in this area down here where the lip is. So I don't have a white spot when I pull off the canvas and it's... Everybody says, well that'll be covered by the frame. Not always, so try to finish off your paintings edge to edge. I make my own frames so I can usually cover up any edging stuff, but I'd rather get it done here at this point in the painting. So uh, let's uh, make some really good strong dark. So let's start with some ultra blue, red, and gray. God, I love this gray. It's a uh, Rembrandt, it's called Cold Gray. It's kind of like gunstock or something. It's really, really good stuff. It's just like a purple gray. And it's going to make a difference. All right, I'm going to get in there and start working on these. These darks. I'm going to have more darks here in the front, and I'm going to have less as I go back. few back here, but my dominant guys are going to be right up in front. As I'm doing this, what I'm thinking is, um, what should I cover of some of the earth color and what should I keep in? So I'm kind of, I thought I had a little bit too much in there. And of course you can have more of the ground color in the foreground than in the background. You need a little bit in the background, but not a whole lot. Sorry, I'm late, George. Good morning, Ralph. Looks like you and Jan this morning. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so with that, I'm going to continue with my foreground. And this time, we're going to eliminate the gray. And we're going to mix a ultra, blue, and red. Add just a touch of white to it. And you get just a beautiful color of kind of a purple, rich purple. And I'm going to use this here as I go farther back. So I'm not using the side of the brush as I do a lot and I'm going to finish off these darks with kind of a silvery color on top and 
And I'm going to add some of this. Oh, darn it. This is hard to get to down in this lower section. I can't get the right angle. Don't lose all your nice darks now. All right, let me get back and see that. So I went from a, a darker dark to a little bit lighter with this purple as I go back. All right, let's make more of a silvery color and put... Uh, Kind of the top of these bushes can have a silvery color. So I'm mixing my two mixtures together I have left. I'm going to add some white, see if that does some, does some good. I'm going to add some warm to it, some maples. So basically I use the um, blue, red, silver, mixed everything together, added some white. And you can see you're going to get some nice silvery type looks out of some of that. Let me just try one more experiment here off to the side. I'm going to do white and just gray. And it's about the same thing. So again, I just mix my two darks together, added some white and some maples. Trying to get some canopy type designs here. What I mean by that is kind of a lights on top. But you can certainly pick up some contamination doing that. But you can kind of see my umbrella type design. I'm going to have to fix this thing. It's hard to get down to the bottom of this. So with the possibility of this whole thing falling into my paint, I'm going to clamp it and maybe see I can get to this a lot easier. Yeah, let me get the side of my brush going here a little bit, and that helps too. Mix some, uh, just some yellow and some bl ultra blue <clears throat> and some white. And it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of that in here too. Kind of see that in the, the reference. I'll put some of that down in this yellow ochre area so it doesn't quite stand out quite so much. So basically I'm putting a cool on top of the worms here and I like that effect. Again, this is ultra blue, yellow ochre, and some white. I'm sorry, uh, yellow and some white. And I'm putting that on top of that yellow ochre we mixed up type, uh, type mixture. Now, looking at this, it looks like I've lost some of my, my dark, so I'm going to reestablish it with ultra blue, gray, and red. And I want to get a few uh, darks like that. Boom. And the only way to do it is just kind of put it on soft and thick. Now 
Now that works in the foreground. I don't think it works so good back in here. But here we need it. Getting back, taking a look, and I'm starting to really like this combination is working pretty good. If you look at the reference, my foreground isn't standing out so much. I think I need a little bit of balance over here with some darks. I'm just putting this on thick. And I'm about out of product. And maybe a little in here. So the strength is here. It gets weakened as we go back. So I think I'm accomplishing what I want, and that is to show that this is in shadow. Down here. Well, let me clean this mixture area up. And let's get up in the sky. Ralph, uh, Jen and I were talking this morning. The difficulty of this um, limited palette, we haven't been able to come up with this limited palette mixture with a viridian green, which we use a lot sometimes in the bottom of our skies because it's a blue-green. Now what we came up with yesterday is basically a, you know, a yellow and gray, yellow and blue type mixture. So, I'm about to do something I haven't done before, so I hope it doesn't completely go into heart failure. I'm going to, I want this dark back here to uh, emphasize the, um, the cliffs. So I'm going to um, add a green, gray type sky uh, back here. So let me uh, first go back with some, get some grays in here, more than I have. I'm going to do uh, blue, gray, ultra blue, cold gray and white. Need more gray. Once you add that white in there, you go, oh! You can figure out, is it too blue or too gray? Thoroughly mixing these guys together. And let me get some of these um, foreground colors out of my big brush. What you hear me tapping is the side of my turf brush. I'm giving it a really good thrashing here with the paper towel. And I'm going to just get a little bit of turp in my, my deal here. I think I might have to get some purple in here also. So I'm just putting this gray in here to the lower part of the painting. I need to get some of my halos out, these whites around the, the mountain, or the uh, backbone. Some of you people that are local and know this backbone area, it's a new open space that was open about 15 years ago and it's really been popular. And I was so lucky that all this kind of backed right up to my property. and. Um, if you're really fortunate to have an open space right adjacent, I actually have open space around 60 or 70 percent of my property. It actually extends to the side in front of my property besides the back. It's really nice. So I'm adding more grays, I think, in this area as we go out. I'm going to make a little few other bolder 
darker spots, so I'm going back to gray, blue, blue, gray. And let me get a few more. I'm going to add some red in there. And I really want two red, so I had to add some white and some more ultra. And I'm going to make a little bit darker mixture in just a few places. And I'm kind of bringing these darks in here to provide emphasis on the darks here. All right, I'm going to get back and take a judgment call on this. And we're looking pretty good. All right, I want to move these uh, blue grays and purples off to the side. I don't think I have much even to save. Maybe just a, a brush load is all. All right, cleaning the old palette here. And now let's make a mixture. Let me put this brush in the turp to, so I can get it ready for the next mixture, which is going to be a more of a warm, so I'm really thrashing my brush again. So let's get some yellow. Cad yellow light or lemon. White and just a touch of gray. More yellow. It's a beautiful green. And now, I'm going to start adding the white. So it goes from very light to dark. Just with that swirl that I have. And so we're going to make a greenish type sky. So first of all, I'm going to get up and the very light side and see what I can do about some lights in the upper area. And then I'm going to add some white white, kind of in here. And here. I've got that big gray running through there, so I'm going to have to break that up with my greens. And here we go. Now I'm working wet on wet, which is just a great way to do all this stuff. And you can see me working these greens over the grays. And now I'm going to start putting some swirls in here. Now again, keeping in mind, I want to keep these nice grays. And I'm making kind of a, a gray-green overlay. I've never made a 
sky quite like this. So this is a first, and I kind of like it. I'm going to have to carry some dark up to the top here. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to have to reestablish my mountains here in the back. I'm going to do some ultra blue, white. I think we've got mountains back here or background hills. This actually, you can see the area that goes up toward Masonville. And let me get some on the other side. This is just ultra blue, deep, by Remington. Might have to make that a little bit stronger. All right, now I need to add some of these nice light greens in some various places. Oop, lost my image. Adding more white to my mixture. And well, one thing we've done is accented that area. Now, because of time, I'm going to soften these a little bit more off camera. What I mean, I've got some strong brush marks, but I don't need to do that right now and do a repetitive thing. But basically what I have is my lights and my dark designs, and it's not a bad design. Now since I'm going to use some of this when I soften my lines, I'm going to have to pick up my greens and let me just soften some of this with my knife, and that helps to soften those st strong end of brush strokes. When you see something, just go like this. Actually, I prefer this brush better, or a knife better. And let me get one more emphasis right in here and bring it right into here. All right, time to get to the main focus of this painting, and that is the pay dirt area right here, these, uh, the devil's backbone itself. So let me get my green off to the side. and start a new mixture. So I basically want to get two areas. I have an, the angled area and the vertical area and this, uh, you know, 45 degree area here. So let me clean my brush. So I forgot to explain to you this part two of the painting is balance. So that's what we've been doing. We've been balancing this by saying what needs to go dark, what needs to go light, what needs to have the color temperature fixed. Is my rust uh, too dark, too light? Does it have a pure enough mixture? So that's what we're going to be working on here. So let's start with some ultra red. I'm sorry, some um, it's a red bowl, it's a red medium, permanent red medium by Rembrandt. And I'm going to add Naples to it. So what we're going to do here is have more of a red and then more of a yellow ochre 
type uh, red down here. So let me just try this mixture a little bit from my knife and see what that does. All right, let's try that. Let me add a little bit of white on one side, see what that does. Let me try that. Good. So we'll add a little white to the mixture. I need to thoroughly mix this. I've got some red showing up in my swirls on my palette. All right. So I'm scooping up this paint and it's a little thick. And I'm getting these I hope you can see this from the, it's just a beautiful color. I'm discovering a lot new colors because, not that I haven't mixed these before, but I'm using a different brand of paint and forcing myself into making these mixtures that are going to help us along here. I think we've got to put a red down in here too. Looks like you've got yellow in there. Is that true? I uh, just have Naples. So I've got Naples and uh, red and white. So this is uh, Naples Yellow Deep by Remington. And then I'm using the, the red we were just discussing. And at the very end, I added a little bit of white. Which cools it down a little bit. And now let's add some texture on this area right here. Ralph, how are you doing on that mixture? Uh, I think I'm behind. I got a number of oranges on here. I'm just trying to uh, put them in the right places. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Well, I think what we want to do now is See if I have any of this stuff left over, not much. I'm going to move it off to the side. And I'm going to make more of a yellow ochre mixture. So what I'm going to use is some red, some yellow, some Naples, and some gray. And that makes the yellow ochre. Now mine's a little dark for what I want, but I might use a little bit of it. I see some to kind of right up here that kind of defines the top from the bottom. Ooh, I'm losing my. Let's get this thing off there and restabilize it. And so I'm going to bring some of these down. And then I'm going to lighten some of it too. So I like the combination of these two, A and B. Wonderful. I just stood back and said, okay, that's good. I didn't make enough of it, so let me make some more. Naples, red, yellow, and gray. The gray seems to bring it into that yellow ochre stuff. I'm out of Naples now. I've got to, and let me add some white because I want to lighten it for down here. We got some Naples. Shy on Naples. And I'm going to add just a little bit more red to give it 
you know, a little bit of relation to what's above it. And there it is. I think I'm pretty close to what actually the reference says here in my monitor. I really like the result of this mixture. And that is about where we need to end today. What I'm going to do off camera is soften these hard stroke lines I have with my big brush or the knife. And that's about it. Tomorrow we're going to work on detail, get some shadows back along the rocks and make more judgments as to how we're doing with, with balance, but gosh, that made a great difference today. You know, I mean, basically what I did with the sky, since I, I don't have uh, Viridian, and we can't seem to come up with it with this limited palette that we have, but we came up with some different greens that we have in the sky, and I think it's kind of making a, it's making a good difference here. I really like it. All right, I quit messing with it and uh, wish you all back tomorrow and uh, to finish this thing. All right, so enough said. What a balanced day. It's really a lot different than where we started today. And I really appreciate where, it's, where we've come today. So we've come a long way. So with that, YouTubers, thanks for coming by and uh, hope to see you tomorrow.